Hi, my name is Ryan Walker. I'm senior analyst at Echelon Capital Markets, and today we have uh, Quint, uh, Quinton Henney, uh, chairman and president of Nova Resources, uh, and he's joining us with uh, our first in a series of Echelon Q&A updates with noteworthy mining companies uh, over the coming weeks. So, Quinton, thanks for taking the time to talk with us uh, today. My pleasure. So I guess to start, we'd kind of be remiss if we didn't ask about uh, any COVID impact uh, that you've seen with Nova Resources. Are your operations suspended at present? Have you had any personnel impact with anything like that? Uh, no people impacted directly, fortunately. Uh, Australia's done a very good job. They've contained things. They've shut the country down. They've shut the states down. Western Australia in particular has really got a good grip on things. Uh, we were shut down for maybe three or four weeks, I think. We're back to work in earnest at this point. Okay, great. That, it's good to hear that uh, there's been nobody impacted personnel-wise. So, so I guess let's just uh, jump right in. Um, could you maybe give us just a quick th thumbnail project description and corporate update? Uh, you know, market cap, your cash position. Are you fully funded for your plans in 2020? Sure. And and you know, what kind of ma major shareholders you, or joint venture partners you have? Okay. Well, let's start with the company first of all. We got about 188 million shares. Market caps uh, somewhere around 600 million Canadian at present. We have about 30 million in cash, plenty of money to do the work we have planned. Uh, look, we have a, a very good shareholder base. We've got Kirkland Lake as our largest shareholder. Of course, Eric Sprott second, uh, but we also have large shareholdings with uh, the Creasy Group. Mark Creasy is a prospector in Australia. Uh, he holds, I think, about seven percent. Uh, we've got Newmont. Uh, we've got some uh, share swaps we did earlier. So we've got. Uh, some stakes and some strategic companies, we'll call it. Very good uh, basis as far as projects go. We've got our edge in the project, which uh, is where we're act very active right at the moment. Uh, but we've also got Beaton's Creek, our most advanced project. We're looking for a strategy to put that, uh, get that towards production. And we're also uh, advancing our Caratha project uh, through plans for trial mining, stuff like that. So we've got lots going this year. Uh, we got 13,000 square kilometers and uh, lots to explore, lots to, to advance all at once. Okay. I, I mean, that's a, a pretty impressive uh, registry there with, with, you know, Eric Sprott, Newmont, uh, Sumitomo's uh, involved as well. Uh, it, I, presumably that, that just speaks to, I mean, number one, your track record and the pr promise, prospect of your land package and your, and your deposits. Uh, maybe you could speak about that a little bit, how you attracted those names and, and how, how involved they are. Sure, look, all of the parties that you know you just mentioned, Newmont, uh, Eric, uh, Kirkland, Sumitomo, they've all come to site multiple times. Uh, we're dealing with some very unusual gold deposits here. You know, these are things that weren't even on anyone's radar, say 10 years ago. But, you know, I, I went to this region on the premise that uh, this Pilbara region was once connected with the capital Craton in South Africa, and there's a lot of gold there, so why couldn't there be gold in, in the Pilbara? All right, so um, those who've been to site, they see it and they understand it. They have, a, they have a grasp of what we're trying to accomplish. They're unusual deposits, so they're nuggety. They're very coarse gold systems, uh, and they're layered. They're sheets of conglomerate. So, you know, these are, are things that not, people aren't necessarily uh, fully uh, up to, you know, fully versed in. At, at present, but we, we're doing the hard work and we're going to show people why we think this is a major gold mining district. Right. Okay. And that, that leads to kind of a little bit of the line, line of question that I had planned. What kind of special steps do you need to take to, to deal with the conglomerate type deposits and the, the, the issues that they bring along with them? You know, that's a, that's a good question. Look, these are, these have a big footprint. They're flat. They, they go on. Okay. So we have to look at a lot of aspects maybe normal mines don't look at, but where, where else have they done this? Well, iron ore has a big footprint too, okay? So, so we do have some, uh, some analogies to turn to. But uh, look, the, the keys for us, we have to demonstrate we can mine these things in a responsible fashion and that we can reclaim them in a way that re returns the land to its pre you know, present value. Okay, so we are, are working on that almost as aggressively as the, the technical work to advance the deposits. The other thing, of course, is working with the Aboriginal communities in this region. Uh, we have a very big footprint and we've struck territory-wide agreements with two of the, the Aboriginal communities in this region uh, and we're working with some of the others. Uh, in fact, uh, we have mining uh, agreements now with, with two others down at Beatons Creek, for example. So, so we realize that that's a very important key to moving this project forward as well. 
Uh, we try to engage and, and, and maintain a good relationship with the Aboriginals at all levels, you know, in the field, uh, you know, respectively you know, to the communities, et cetera. I guess Beaton's Creek is obviously one of the areas of focus. Uh, That's right. talked previously about trying to fast track that to a sense into production. What are the kind of milestones along that and, and the timelines to, to production in your mind there? Uh, look, Beaton's Creek is our most advanced project. We do have a resource, you know, in spite of the fact it's negative, we've got a resource around 450,000 ounces, each of indicated and inferred. Uh, we've done all the mine permitting, so it's fully permitted at this point. Um, we've struck our native title agreements. We've got, uh, you know, actual uh, agreements to go mining with the Aboriginal communities. Um, in our view, Beaton's Creek could be fast-tracked at this point. We are looking uh, at, at options of how to do that. Um, there's a few options that, that, you know, take us down a standalone approach, for example. And then there's other options that, that might relate to uh, strategic acquisitions. At this point, we haven't uh, settled on, on the right path just yet, but we're getting very close. Okay, okay. And do you have kind of the, the, the team put in place to, to follow that yeah. path to, to production yeah. yourself? Yeah. Uh, about three years ago, I recognized that Nova would have to make this leap. Uh, we could see a lot of these, the, we'll call them discoveries, coming to fruition. Like it was clear that we had something that was gonna have to be advanced towards a mining state. So I brought in Rob, Rob Humphrey, someone CEO. I stepped aside as CEO. Rob is a very capable engineer. He's also very well connected in the Australian mining community, uh, has a lot of respect amongst uh, his peers, knows a lot of people everywhere from you know, uh, contractors to, to uh, suppliers to you know, the state engineer, to, you know, et cetera. Like he knows most everyone. All right, so uh, he's a very valuable part of our asset, but he in turn has, I've, I've told him to build the team he needs to take these things to production. So we've actually, uh, for instance, in-house, we've got uh, engineer hired. We've got uh, in-house environmental scientists. We've got, uh, you know, effectively a metallurgical uh, team and stuff. So we've got all the people where we need. In fact, we've hired some more recently. Uh, we brought on a, a fellow named Chris Martin, who's an experienced miner, who we think can, uh, can run circles around uh, future operations. Yeah. Okay. No, that's that great. Thank you. And so for the balance of 2020, what, uh, what, are, what are the work plans? What are the main catalysts you see driving the stock for the rest of the year at least? Yes. Okay. So there's, there's several new streams that we'll have. Firstly, at Edgina, we have a lot of places to explore. We've just started exploring a place called Paradise, which is really the first big step out we've done uh, away from the, the area that we worked last year. Okay, this is out on the flat terrace. We've done, done some uh, bulk samples, or I should say test samples. Uh, we call them MAC samples, M-A-K for, for short. And we put them through a small alluvial plant and we, we get an assessment of how much gold is in this. So it, it basically serves as a guide to tell us where the gold system is out on the flats. And we're getting some remarkable results. We're seeing uh, point counts of gold in the, the samples there is as high or higher than we saw at the test area we did last year. So look over the next, uh, how many months are left? Seven months that we have in this year. Uh, we've got lots of uh, new areas, I think 20 new areas that we're gonna do test sampling. Then we'll follow up with bulk sampling. Bulk sampling is actually where we process material and we assess the grade that way. So we'll be able to start speaking about grade, uh, grades of the terrace gravels. Uh, and that will lead to a decision on where we, we will plan to go trial mining in the not too distant future. Okay, so we want to identify these areas, show the system is big, come to comfort with that, and then plan our next phase, which would be trial mining. Now, the test uh, work that we did with mechanical sorting is also an important co component of this whole work. So we did a lot of laboratory scale test work. 
Now it's time to get the machine out in the field and do that kind of test work. So we have plans to get a, a sorter out. It's a bit of a challenge right now with coronavirus, but uh, things are starting to loosen up a little, and I think we, we can pull it off. Uh, I was hoping to have one out you know, here shortly, but I think it'll be delayed by a couple of months. But I think we'll be able to, to show the world that uh, sorting can be applied in the field. So that's another news stream. And then I think there will be news around Beaton's Creek this year. I think uh, we can demonstrate a way, you know, a viable path to production there. So lots coming. Lots coming. Okay, great. That's uh, that's fantastic. And I guess uh, maybe not not your uh, your bailiwick, but uh, it related. I, I suppose. Uh, would you care to give us your your outlook on gold uh, going <laughs> going forward? Oh, uh, look, not uh, asking for a specific number, but. Uh, Look, uh, I think most people who have invested in this industry realize that this is a pretty unique time. Um, I, you know, I've been interested in gold since I was a kid. I remember listening to Paul Harvey every day, listening for the gold price, you know, back in the late 1970s, because it was, it was an exciting time. Gold went from $175 to, I think, $800 by early uh, January, 20, uh, sorry, 1980, wrong, wrong millennia. Um, anyway, you know, I think we're going to see a similar scenario here. Um, lots of money being printed. Um, it's kind of like, kind of like playing Monopoly with somebody who cheats, you know? Um, <laughs> so, uh, those who, who understand that they, you know, the consequences of this and, and don't want to get cheated, uh, they have a place to turn to and that be gold mining. And I think gold mining will do well over the next, next few years. Uh, what's a gold price? No idea. It's not about the gold price, though. It's about the gold. Okay, the dollar is what's falling. Gold, an ounce of gold, still weighs an ounce of gold. <laughs> All right, well said, well said. Well, listen, I, I think that was a, a great uh, overview. And, uh, you know, it's an exciting story. Geologically, really interesting. But like you said, at the end of the day, it's the gold bars that count. So we'll be watching it and, and seeing you guys progress along the path to production. And, you know, ho hopefully and maybe in a couple months, we can, uh, we can have another quick update like this. Uh, I think investors will get to, to some new set of this and thanks very much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Sure. Pleasure. All right. Thank you very much, Quentin. Okay. Thank you.